Well, our prayer that as, um, is that as Mariam comes to bring our reading now, that we will have a fresh revelation of Jesus as Robin then comes to preach to us. Robin, one of our lay preachers. I can't see Mariam, so it might be more of my voice. <laughs> Our reading today is from the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, It's from the first section of that book, and Robin is going to be introducing it to us, and it's the first nine verses. Bibles can be found on the side if you'd like one, but the words will also be up on the screen. 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, from verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be a holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. For in him, you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. And God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Robin. And let me quickly pray for you, Robin, as you, uh, as you come. Lord Jesus, I thank you for our brother, Robin, for the work you've done in his life, for his call, for the grace you've given him, that you have made him holy and you are fulfilling a call to a holy life. We pray that you would bless him, give him freedom, and may he hear your spirit as he preaches today. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. As Dave already introduced me, that uh, about me, I'm a Robin Peter. So I've been in this church since 2014. So let's today's talk is uh, we are starting a new series about the new book uh, about First Corinthians. Then I want to discuss about what is letter a letter about two, and how was the life of in Corinthians in first century when Paul was there. And who wrote this book, first of all? And then about Paul, what Paul was like, and uh, why should I listen to him? And what are the message, today's, today's message we got it from these verses. So let's pray for you before, just a short prayer. Lord Jesus, this is your promise, Father. You said you will not preach. You will not say a word, but my spirit will speak through you. So we invite God, Holy Spirit. Take control. Give me the right word to say. And open the ears, Lord Jesus. Hearts, Lord Jesus. Whom we want to touch. And best of all, I know you love us, Lord. The mighty power in this world and all these universes is your love. And thank you for your love, that you loved us before even eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So yes, about, uh, about the Corinthians. Corinthians' location and, uh, at that time. And why Paul went down there. If you see, the Corinthians uh, strategically was a place where it was a trading port. It's like, you know, there were so much trading was happening at that time. And Paul was like a you know, fisherman, you know, and Jesus said, uh, you have to be a fisherman. And he was always looking for how to save soul, how to penetrate new areas. And that's why he, uh, he went down to Corinthians. 
There was one historian, uh, uh, Leon Morris, his, he described that this is the important city as intellectually alert, materially prosperous, but morally corrupt. If you see at that time, at the occurrences, there were so many goals. There were so many demonic rituals were going down there. But this is Paul. Paul said, okay, I'll go there. And as a church planter, he went down there. And there was a background of two, uh, two three, uh, like in a higher class was there, rich people. And then the lower class, slave was there. So he went down and the church, if you see Corinthians, all book of Corinthians, uh, all three, uh, three times he visited two Corinthians. And uh, he can, you can see the, through the writing, the Paul, his heart, as a soul winner, then as a, as a, as a spiritual father, and he was he was he was directing he was he was talking to to them both all of them, and then if you like today's world like uh, if you take uh, London City or I can compare with the Las Vegas like in a we call the Sin City, same culture at that time Crompton's was there. You can you can go check on Google how the culture was there, how bad it was, but this guy wanted to preach the gospel over there. We uh, sometimes we do evangelism outside, and now uh, we see. I see so many times there were so many so many faiths, so many so many arguments how you can discuss the love of God. The people are so far away from the right word. They, any word, anyone can say, oh yeah, I know love. But do they really know the true love? That's what Paul was after. Now Paul was uh, like, a, uh, like a spiritual father and uh, if, if, you are, if you are parents, uh, then you know how extreme you can go for your children to save them, to see them prosper. To see them, they are doing good, something, lots of good things. And that's what Paul was saying. That's what Paul, he's, he, one of the letters he said that, I, I have been through all these things. I have been shipwrecked, uh, shipwrecked. I have been beaten. One time he was stoned so badly that the people thought he died. Then again he got up and went back to the same city and preached the gospel. So you can see the heart of a person here. How he's doing it to save the soul. And not only saving the soul and planting a church and then move on. No, he was keep an eye on them, what is happening. He was keep writing the letter. And there was a three visits he did, he did to the Corinthians also. But here, one of the, uh, one of the letter he's, he's talking about because at the time, even today is also, if we talk about the, uh, some funds, we talk about some help, people are talking about, oh, the church people are, uh, they're after your money. It's not today's scenario. Even the Paul, Paul time was also there. They were, they were talking about, hey, he, he, this guy is just a, another con man. He's just want to get money. But here Paul was like in a true father's heart. Second Corinthians 2, uh, 2, 12, 14 said, the third time, I'm ready, I'm ready to come to you. And I will not go to some of to you, for I do not seek yours, but you. If you read the whole letter, you, he's talking about what is exactly yours. He's talking about, I don't need, I'm not seeking your money. I'm not after your money. I'm after your soul. I'm after you like a father. I want to show you what the exact heart is like. You know, that's, that's what Paul was talking about. If you, if you study this, this, this guy, this character, whose Paul is, why should I listen to him? What the credibility he has. If you read the book of Acts, this guy, I, ho I know I have, you understand that this guy was a prosecutor of the church. He loved killing Christians. And at the time, maybe you don't know, uh, right now, take any, any, any terrorist who is after Christians. This guy was at that time, that was a terrorist. And the church was, 
away, the church was running away because there was so much prosecution first, uh, before prosecution happened, mainly happened from the Jews, leaders, Jews. So Paul was one of them. He was a properly educated person. He knew Torah, and he was, he was zealous about his own religion, and he was thinking that Christian is a threat, so he would just want to kill them. So that's why Paul was uh, running after the church. And that, there, there's one, uh, remember uh, when uh, he has a transformation. He was, Damascus Road, what happened? He had an encounter with Jesus. This guy, before the Damascus Road, he had everything. All the wealth of the world, all the facilities of the world. Religiously, he was okay. But once he had an encounter with Jesus, life literally transformed. Literally transformed. And remember, Ananias was talking to... Uh, uh, when God told him, uh, go and uh, see my, uh, talk to Paul and pray for him. Here, yeah. Paul, uh, Ananias was reminding Jesus, like he was telling, maybe Jesus is a no. He said, this guy is killing Christians, and you're asking me to pray for him? And wh what Jesus said, Acts 9, 15, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, before kings and the children of Israel. This was a JD job description of Paul, what he's going to do. Jesus, Jesus himself said that. And we've seen this his life. That Paul, like I just said, that he's gone through so much. Then he, he testifies in, in front of Agrippa, King Agrippa. He was even preaching to him. And you know, King Africa said, do you want me to be transformed right now? What Paul was saying, I have what I want, I want to be transformed everyone. A part of this change, but I'm having it. See the heart, he's, he's just totally sold for Christ. And remember that verse, uh, when Jesus was praying for a whole the church, book of Acts 17, 1720 is a particular verse that's really a prayer. I really consider, think about this one. Jesus said, I do not pray for those alone, means all these 12, but also for those who believe in me through their words. And they all, be, they all may be one. So it's not only 12 Jesus was praying, and all who are listening to them, like including Paul and all the disciples, even like you are running Alpha. Jesus' prayer is covering everyone. Whoever will listen, whoever will come to Christ, whoever will feel that this is the right one. So, here we can see that the same, same verse, if you're, uh, today's verse, uh, second verse, the, to the church, which is in Corinthians, those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So once we are sanctified, once we are in Christ, maybe my life will not change. But there's a one preacher said, when, when we become born again, what happened? The true eternal life. That's what Jesus, Jesus said, John 3, 3. You have to be born again to see the kingdom of God. What happened? My spirit, once I become, I receive Jesus, my spirit is transformed. I become a son of God. So my eternity is sorted. I am living in this life, in this flesh. But I have to work on that. But here, this is the reason he was, he was talking. Paul was saying, who are sanctified in Christ Jesus to be called. Once you be sanctified, once you come to Jesus Christ, you're already sanctified. No, no matter as like today's word of messy church. So, yeah, no matter what messy things you, you see, you're going through, you're feeling like you're putting yourself down. But I just, I was just sitting down, I just, the uh, Holy Spirit reminded me of one thing. If I'll take a 20 pound note, new note, and just crush it and throw it, the value of the note will be remain there. 
That's the way God sees. The value, your value, my value is there. And then again, Paul, again, Ephesians 2, 2 8, he says, We are saved by grace, not by action. Some of the religion, even most of the religion will tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Then maybe you are saved. But what Jesus said, I am the way. The day you will receive me, you will be with me. He said, then me and Father will come and live inside of you. Remember at the cross, what he did, uh, said to that uh, robber, Today you are with me. This guy, that's why at, that, at his time, people, normal people, Jews were saying, this guy has some, some authority. He's talking with some authority. He's not like normal Jews, normal teachers. They are preaching, preaching, preaching. No, this guy has some authority. So Paul is also talking about the same thing. What I understood that he had an encounter, then he was growing. He was growing in Christ so much that he was, if, if you see the level of this, his growth is that Jesus, one time he was talking about, uh, he's talking to his disciples and he was discussing them something and they didn't understand. And then he, you can see Jesus' heart. He said, if you don't understand this thing, how would you understand when I will tell you about the heavenly thing? But here's Paul was also talking about that uh, again for four words. I thank God always for the concerning for the grace of God, which is given to you by Jesus Christ, not me, but Jesus Christ, that you are enriched in everything in him and all the truths and knowledge. So it means when we receive Jesus, you have all the truths, you are enriched with him, only you have to tap into that and how we can, we can ask, we can get more. For, uh, the wisdom, like there's so many things in, in our we can, we can talk about this one. I could say there's another message for this. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, he's going through it. Again, same, same verse, it's a Second Corinthians 8, 9, he was talking about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through, though he was rich, yet for my sake, for your sake, he become poor. And through his poverty, so you become rich. So he's talking about in all utterance and knowledge, we are enriched by him. So my lifestyle will testify. I don't have to carry the Bible. I don't have to preach the Bible. As someone who very said that, Christian read Bible, but non-Christian read Christians. So I don't know. Maybe tomorrow your workplace, maybe at the bus stop, maybe at the market, people are reading you. One day, I was actually, I went to, at the time, I used to live my, uh, with my uncle. I went down to other, uh, North, I went down to Greenford by the bus. I did some shopping. I came out. And uh, while I was sitting at a bus stop, I was singing my gospel, Punjabi gospel songs. And uh, the lady, there's a little uh, girl, she was African. And she just turned around and she said, brother, which church you go? I said, wow. I said, how do you know? She said, I can sense it that you are singing some gospel songs because I can sense the spirit. It's, it's, the, it's the lifestyle. Even at my workplace, I know people are, you know, they are they, some people, they call me fanatic for Jesus. But it's not like we have to be like that, but our lifestyle. What is my lifestyle? Yes. Even if, then again, of course, even the testimony of Jesus Christ was confirmed in you. Even Paul was talking about is a testimony of Jesus. Jesus said, by, you, by the action you will know they are my disciple. He didn't say that by, by the preaching. He didn't say that by how, how long they are going to the temple, how, how long they are worshiping, how long they are praying. It's a by the action you will know. Easy answer. It helped me a lot when I was a teenager. Because in, back in Pakistan, every second day there's a new preacher will come, there a new preacher will try to knock your door and say, I want to preach the gospel. But then you will see the lifestyle. 
So you will, then Paul says, so you will not short of, so you come short of no gift. Paul knew once we, we receive Jesus, we have a fullness of everything. Fullness. The great commission, why God given me this gift? Why God has given you the gift? To expand his kingdom. Great, com great commission is to heal the sick, cast out the name, raise the dead, and preach the gospel, and baptize them, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is our main, main reason. As my, one, of the, uh, one of my uh, previous mentor, he used to say, he used to say, my full-time work is this. My part-time work is my workplace, where I'm working. So we have literally swapped the things. Uh, oh, I'm an accountant, or I'm a doctor. Then I go to church. But my end of the day, I'll be judged by this. So even Jesus says, so... So you will have a blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in this world. Paul was talking about, so you will be blameless in front of Jesus when God, Jesus will ask you. Jesus will see you. Even Jesus said that in this world, if they prosecute me, they will prosecute you too. You'll see the prosecution. Even you see there's so much persecution happening right now. Paul again quoted that I, I want to know. This is the verse, is the, is so powerful, and sometimes made me think, what he, why he was writing. Still don't understand this thing, but I want to know. Why Paul was saying, Philippians three ten at two eleven. I want to know the power of his resurrection, and a fellowship of his suffering. I've been conformed to his death, and by any mean, I attain to the resurrection to that. It's a fellowship of his suffering. And this guy was talking about, he's not talking about, oh, I just want to write down to impress the church. I just want to write. This guy was beaten. This guy was shipwrecked. And he's gone through all these things. And that's why he said, I want to know the fellowship of suffering. The, I want to, there's, there's something in the suffering that you get close. When, when the preaching, when the, I, I tell you, it's this. There was a one, one time, 2013, late, I lost my dad. And he was my role model. Before that, I, I was okay with, the, with, with my walk with Christ. And uh, there was a one, one of my mentor challenged me. He said, which God you're serving? Is the God is only for the light, God of light, or he's the God of darkness? He said, Robin, time will come. When you will understand what I'm talking about. That was a time when I lost my dad for one, two good weeks. Since I become born again, before we born again, since I fall in love with this God, I never thought, I never sensed that I've been separated. But these two weeks, not only I lost my dad, but I literally left, I can sense that there's no presence. So I, I used to go out for a walk to just to, to show my wife that I'm going for a walk. But outside I've been, I mean, I mean, I've been praying, I've been crying, I've been singing, trying to do everything which the Bible said. Then the word that David was reminding God his promises. So on this two weeks time, I only focus on his word of promises that he's with me. And then after that, other, other, other trials comes, but through that suffering, I come to know what is the stronghold, what I'm standing on. His, his, his love. Nothing. Paul, when he was writing, what can separate me from the love of God? Nothing. 
It was talking about no demon in the house, no poverty, no wealth, nothing can separate me. Because he understood that love, that is so much in and out. That's what he was talking about, uh, Ephesians 3.10. He said, I want to know you, the breadth, height, length of Christ's love is, that every Christian should know. Why he was saying this? Because he, he's, he's seen it at the time prosecution is happening. Even today's world, there's so much pressure. There was one uh, communist country where uh, Christianity is prohibited, literally banned to preach the gospel. They caught like 12 people. And they want to show other public the what we're going to do with them. They call them the, in, in a big stadium. And these 12 guys are standing, and there's a guard the gun and he asked them do you want to deny Jesus he said if you say yes I'm going to leave you if you say no you're gone so he went to first guy he said you want to deny Jesus he said no gone another guy no another guy no he went, reached to 11th number he said no when he reached to 12 he said do you want to deny he said, yes. Then the guard said, what? He said, yes. He said, okay, take this gun and shoot me. He said, the guy who's denied, he said, why are you saying this? He said, before, I didn't know Jesus. But when I shoot the first guy, when I asked him a question, his face was so peaceful, and I was seeing that peace. When I shoot him, I seen the angel came down and take his spirit. I thought, oh, maybe it's my, my mind or maybe my uh, thinking. Then I did the second guy, same, these two things happen. By reaching to you, I just come to know this Jesus is, is must be a real guy because these guys are standing for him and he, he is doing it. He said, I want to know him, shoot me. So this is the real stories. Even so many stories still happening in Pakistan, in Muslim countries, even in Africa, even North Korea, China, underground churches. I heard China, they had just taken a one page of the Bible and read it, and tomorrow I'll give it to her, and she will give me her page of the Bible. I will read it. And that's the way underground churches are growing in China. China. In Pakistan also, there's so much, I can, I've seen it, this prosecution. And all this, this thing is, uh, is, is true, true nature of faith will come out when the prosecution happens. And that's what Paul was talking about, I want to know, fellowship is suffering. See this guy, he had, a, before conversion, he had everything. And now, this guy was suffering for Christ. He was in a jail, and he was in a prison. It's not like in a UK prison that you can tell the jailer, I need a Wi-Fi, I need this, I need this. Over there, literally a bad prison, smelly and everything. And this guy was worshiping. He, he was singing. And what happened was the singing that the angel has to break in. That kind of a guy, this, this guy has an... The way he, he understood the love. That, that's what he was saying this. And history confirms wherever the church is prosecuted, the, rap, the church grows rapidly. And slowly, slowly, the prosecution is coming in, in our Western countries also. So you can see in our, in our opening prayer, Paul was pointing out, reminding the church that you are called. You are full of God's wisdom to expand his kingdom. And like a father, he wants, to, he wants the church to go more deeper. And like he was saying, eagerly waiting for his revelation of Jesus Christ. So how we can do these things? If you have an encounter with God, Jesus Christ, that's great. 
But that's the first step. He was asking us to go more deeper. Like if only we read them. There was a time that these two uh, disciples were going down there and Jesus uh, connected with them and just uh, discussing with them. And at the, uh, at the end, in the, I think in the book of John, at the end when he broke the bread and said, oh, this is Jesus. So we are in a time of we have revelation, the time that we come to know he was not a baby anymore. He's a king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. How very soon he's coming back. So on the cross, he did it everything. He did it for me. Opened the door for me to be his son. On the cross, a big transaction happened. He becomes sinful, sinless, becomes sinful, and sinful becomes sinless. All the judgment put in written in Torah was came down to him. And all the love was prophesied in Torah came down to us. He opened the door for us. So that's, that's what Paul was talking about. You can see his writing of the different letters that he was always going. And that was Jesus. That Jesus said, remember that, that lady at the well. He said, God is looking for a worshiper who worship him in spirit and truth. That's the worship he's looking for. That when we worship from heart, not from, there's a verse in Old Testament, it's a man sees his face, but God sees the heart. I can, I can do anything I can. You, you, you will not know. He will know this because he listens this. So today, today's talk is all about the, uh, the, the thing I understood. He wants to show us his heart, the God heart. Paul was also, Jesus was, Jesus, he said that and Paul was literally working on it. He said, imitate me like I'm, I'm imitating Christ. So let's ask God how I can I can I can I can come to that point. Roman 10, 10 says, if my heart believes and mouth confess that Jesus is the Lord, I become born again. John 3:3 3, 3 says, You cannot, Jesus Himself, this is his word. If the Master is saying, and before this word, he said, Truly, truly, means Jesus reminded twice. That you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. So there's something happened in a spiritual realm. You open up. And the Paul was talking about to get the revelations, get the depth, get the height, get the, get the deeper love of God. That's what Paul was also talking about. So let's, let's ask God. Let's pray. Close our eyes and See, in any area, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm not aligned with him. And if it's, everything is okay, and I can ask, Father, how I can go deeper, how I can know you much deeper, deeper level, Lord Jesus, where I lose my everything and understand you. Because tomorrow, and oh, this is sure, tomorrow I'm going to see you. And I want to hear this same word, you are my faithful servant. Let's come down, let's come down to that cross. But Jesus did it for me, Jesus did it for you. Open the door to show us the Father's heart. It took, it took God six days to create all this world. But for my salvation, he paid it all, everything. It took him for more than 2,000 years until his son will come back. That's a patient heart he has. That's a, that's a lovely heart he has, father's heart. And he's still waiting for us. When my son, when my daughter 
will truly come back to me and surrender to me. Maybe he's talking to you right now. Maybe you're hearing a little voice of surrendering. I remember this verse in, in, in my own language, but I try to translate it in English. And he said that uh, if you hear his voice, do not be hardened. Listen to his voice. Maybe he's whispering in your ear. Just surrender. And thank him for what he did on the cross. Thank him that he forgiven my sin and accept him as, as his son and daughter. And thank you, Father, for your love, Lord Jesus. You've given us a time to understand you on a much deeper level, Lord. And still we want to learn more. So tomorrow we'll say, I love you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Robin.